So imagine my surprise when I reboot my machine after getting an update and I spot this new little thing sitting here on my taskbar and it's called Copilot and it's saying preview and then it pops up a window on the right hand side and then I realize what it is, that it is an AI servant, or let's call it an AI assistant, uh, very much like ChatGPT, uh, and obviously what's been built into Bing. So here we are, it's 48 hours later, and what I want to do in this video is to test its coding abilities. I'm not gonna test it very hard because I don't want to make the video long and complicated and boring. I'm gonna test some simple stuff here, and I want you to test it with me. So let's have a look and see how this responds. One more thing that I do want to add is that I'm going to be testing this on MT5. I can test it on MT4, but I want to see how it responds on MT5 for the purposes of uh, this first part of the video. If it works really well, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to test it on MT4 as well. So what I was thinking is that I would ask it to help me create an indicator that would help me identify particular types of candles. And the one that jumps to mind would either be, let's say, an inside candle or perhaps an engulfing candle. All right. And... So first of all, let's quickly talk about why we would want, why we would care about an engulfing candle. What does an engulfing candle tell us? Well, first of all, when we see an engulfing candle, it is usually an indication that there is a big potential swing in the opposite direction. It means that despite what happened in the previous candle, the following candle subsequently has tested both sides, effectively has tried to break out one way, then has reversed and has decided or settled on the other side outside of the previous candles range. So if this is on a daily time frame, it means that we could be seeing a strong reversal. This is especially significant when it happens at a major resistance level. So for example, right in front of me here, I've got the NASDAQ. We can see this is a, a daily, weekly, I beg your pardon, weekly, you can see that 15,761 price had initially a rejection candle. It then attempted to carry on. You can see it was very bullish in the run up to that, followed then by an outside or engulfing candle, which then moved the momentum shifted from bullish to bearish and closed significantly below the previous candles. It wasn't engulfing this previous rejection candle, but it was enough to signify that the momentum had clearly shifted from trying to keep going up to now bearish and then subsequently moved down um, quite a bit of a way. All right. And so these types of candles can be incredibly, uh, can be an additional piece of evidence in evidence-based trading and technical analysis that can help add evidence or add weight to decision in which way or to give us clarity into which way a market is looking to go. So all I really want to do in this section is ask Copilot. If Copilot can help me create an indicator that will help identify engulfing candles. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can get it to do that. So because I'm in MT5, I definitely want to make sure that that is the case. I'm going to just kind of say, please, can you help... Uh, and of course, you're going to have to excuse the typos here. Can you help me write the code for an MT5 indicator that will identify engulfing candles? That's it. So let's just see how this goes. Can you help me write the code for or even help me write an indicator? I'm actually going to do it differently here. Just can you help me write and indicate it. Either one of those would be fine. The more, obviously, the better you, the better the question, the more detailed the question, it breaks it down. And that's why it's called a large language model, because it's breaking down the sentence that you create into particular chunks and then trying to digest and process that and then do it within context as well. So can we do that uh, for uh, MT5? So just say for MT5. So I'm overdoing this now, but I just want to see how it works on the first one. That will help, uh, that will uh, identify engulfing candles. Okay, and I'm going to also say bullish or bearish engulfing candles. Bullish and bearish engulfing candles. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Take a sip of coffee from my nice little mug. Very cool. While we wait. Sure, I can help you write an indicator for it. There we go. Start writing the code. Okay, okay, okay. So while that is happening, I am going to need to, um, I'm going to need to compile that code. So I'm going to go into the tool section and I am going to bring up the language editor and wait for that to open up. So this is happening side by side. I'm going to ask it to create a new custom indicator. New custom indicator. I'm going to go to the next part and I'm going to call this one Copilot. Bing, engulfing. Just let's go with that and have a look. 
That's it. Just giving it a name so that I can identify it in my indicators uh, folder. I'm then going to step ahead. Just straightforward. Don't worry. I just want to get to the place where I now have effectively this box. Okay, this code will draw green arrows below the bullish engulfing candles and red arrows above it. You can modify the code according to your needs. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go up and check something. The, what I'm looking for now, what I'm looking for in this moment, is just to check that it has included this information. Because otherwise, if it hadn't, I'm just going to remove that part and I'm going to keep that. So it appears as though it has done it, which, by the way, um, didn't happen or doesn't happen when I use ChatGPT. All right, so I'm going to clean that up. And I'm going to go across and I'm going to copy it. So it's very cool. It's already prepared or allowed me to do that. I'm just going to paste that in here. I'm going to check it. All right. Now the big moment. Now the big moment. The tension. We're going to hit compile. We're going to see if we get any errors. Let's see if this happens. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Or in South Africa, as we say, holding thumbs. I didn't even know that wasn't a normal thing, but holding thumbs. Let's see. Eight errors. Eight errors. Okay. Interesting. All right. So let's uh, have a look and see if we can fix these errors. Uh, we've got unexpected token. We've got various other things. So this is interesting to me. So I'm going to try something else here as well. I am going to, we're going to see how this works. Uh, can I copy all of this? Can I copy all of this? I can. Um, does it give me what those are? No, it doesn't. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to try something here. I'm going to grab these, this, I'm going to copy it. So this is an image. Okay. It's an image and I am, I'm going to add it to the chat and say, uh, these are the errors I get when I try to compile your code. Uh, can you read? the pasted image. That's kind of, I need to check that first. So let's just see, let's add it, boom, and send it. And let's see what happens. I'm just trying stuff here. Crazy, it's just crazy. Nice uh, sound of me sipping coffee there. Let's have a look and see what it says. Waiting, waiting, awkward silence, moments, conversation lapses. How's that weather, hey? Just a little bit crazy. We have a, I have a, there's a sun roof here. And it's amazing though, although it's overcast, it's incredibly hot and muggy in London today. It's really not great weather. Um, and it's overcast. And at the same time, it's still very blinding. Who would have thought that? Um, okay, so it's still happening. So, 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 so. How's the weather? Okay, here we go. Hold on. I'm sorry that you're having trouble compiling my code. I've looked at the image you've sent me and I can see that there are some syntax errors in your code. Here are some possible solutions. For the first three errors, you have an unexpected token aligned to this. Da, 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 da. So hold on. Let's just take a moment. And I didn't know if it would copy that it would read that. So that's very cool. Okay. Um, and I'm going to try this. I'm saying... Can you fix the code for me? I'm just trying this stuff, guys. Oopsie. That is so cool. That That is just because instead of me having to copy and paste it and trying to do it, I cannot fix the code for you. That is beyond my capabilities. Oh, I don't buy that. It wrote the code. Okay. Disappointed. I heard that actually the best thing to do when somebody does something silly when you're driving in traffic is don't shout at them. Just go... And apparently it's more upsetting. It's more offensive. Okay. Um, all right. So I, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to see if I can find a solution because I don't want to drag this thing out. It's already nine minutes long. And then I'm going to see if there's a way to fix it. But I'm basically going to keep trying to do the same thing. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So it's probably one minute later. And I think I know what the, I don't know if we've solved the issue, but I think I know how to work, how to go about solving it. So Let's quickly just go back up. So basically, I want to show you what happened. I went, can you fix the code for me? And it said, I'm sorry, but I can't fix the code for you. Then I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take the original code that you wrote for me and attempt to fix the errors that you have just highlighted. And it came back and said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you. So what I thought, what I think is I, that doesn't make any sense. First of all, GPT would not give me back chat like that. So no attitude. And this doesn't really make sense. 
So then I said, okay, rewrite the code from scratch then taking the errors into account. And then it said, well, I'm sorry, but I can't rewrite the code from scratch. I was like, of course you can. So it occurred to me that actually the problem it's having is that it, it thinks I'm asking you to access the meta editor, the, the application, and work within the application, which is not obviously what I'm asking it to do. I'm asking it to write the code that it just work within its own history within the, that existing conversation. So then what I said is, here is the code. I will repaste it in here, check it against the errors, and then tell me. And this is what came back. Uh, and then this is what came back. So this is the response that's just happened. Uh, it tried to connect with Edge, which I found is interesting. And then it says, I've checked your code against the errors and I have fixed them where needed. Here is the revised code snippet that you can use. So there we go. Now I'm going to try it again. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to replace all of this, put it in here. And I'm going to try compile. Maybe I shouldn't have done the, the whole the holding thumbs. Let's try that. Same errors. Okay. Getting a little frustrated. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to pause the video and I don't need to waste your time with this. Okay, so here we are again. Um, but what I did do differently this time is I actually was able to copy and paste from here. So instead of grabbing the image, I uh, can actually just go here. I can select it and then I can shift select it here, paste those errors in, and it immediately went back to, okay, I'm going to fix those errors. So let's try again. Maybe I should just stop kind of trying to feel lucky about it. So let's just do that. Go like this, put it in. I feel like, is it not pasting? Maybe it's not, like, is there any difference between what it's pasting? Same errors. It's almost as though it's not actually pasting this. Copied. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So anyone who codes, even the slightest bit, is watching this now going, this guy's a moron. Just go in and fix the things you need to fix. I got it to work. Well... I got the code to compile. So, all right, let's just just take a moment. So first of all, I understand that a lot of people watching this aren't coders. So this is, I'm trying to present a case as though if you're not a coder, what do you do? Now, believe it or not, I think coding is a learnable language. Why do I say that? Because everybody under the age of 25 these days is pretty much learning it, which means that anyone over the age of that is just going to have to accept that it can be done. We can learn any language. It just takes a bit of practice. So just to explain what I did, because the entire history is here. So I'm just going to go back up a little bit. Uh, and basically what I did, this is my logic. I started copying one error in at a time and said, can you tell me what this error means? So, because it was, it was kept saying to me, I said to you, can you check this code, check the code, make sure that it should work, that it is for MT5 and that it is up to date with um, that the keywords that are used, for example, and it's are up to date from the book because they do sometimes change stuff. So they'll change, for example, bullish buffer, which is a whatever a variable, and they'll change it to something else. They do occasionally do that. So then it came back and it said, no, this is absolutely perfect. It will work. And I was like, it's not working. So then I said, okay, one error at a time. So what does this error? And then it said to me, this error uh, means that you've typed something that isn't valid in the language, which didn't make sense because it just told me that it did. So eventually, uh, I started, I worked out, I said, okay, it said here, it isn't declared, which basically meant that there's a little bit of code missing that should create it. So what that means is if I show you on the screen, uh, the set index error, it kept saying, uh, said it isn't declared, which basically I worked out, that means that I have to say to it, I'm going to use this function and we're going to call it set index. So I'm, I missed that part. It just said, here's the function. So um, basically, I created... It's almost as though you're going to create a new tool, but you haven't told it what the new tool does. So that kind of was the idea. Anyway, and it seemed to, uh, then it created, I said, can you help me write that? And it said, yes. So it gave me the line. Then I put the line in where I thought it was. And it was like, you have put it in the wrong place. This is why it didn't, but it didn't give me the same errors. Then I said, okay, here's all of the code. Put it in the right place. Okay, so here I said, uh, where is it? I went and said, I've moved, oh, uh, I said, sorry, go back. Uh, what does this error mean? Da, 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 function declarations are allowed, blah, 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 gave me the issue. Uh, then it wrote the answer. Then I said, okay, here is all of the code. Please move the function, I have spelled it wrong, function declaration to the correct line. Then it wrote it, I copied it, I pasted, and I compiled it. Now we have to go see if it works. 
I don't, I mean, look, let's imagine I try to write 10 indicators for myself and I'm playing around and it compiles half of them and the other half, it gives me errors like this. I figure with a little bit of messing around, you can learn how to fix those things and it can help you do that. I think when the indicators get complicated or you want to write an expert advisor, that's when it's get a little bit more tricky. But the other thing you can do is you can, if you can get access to the code, you could say, what does this code do? And it'll read through it and go, well, it does this and this and this. You can kind of learn by reverse engineering. Anyway, let's go and see. So I'll go back to the platform and I'll refresh the indicators. This is all real time, by the way. So none of this is made up. I didn't pre-rehearse this. So now I need to see if I can find the indicator. So where is the... Where is the indicator? So I'll go here and just make sure that it is in the indicator folder. Okay, because uh, it's possible it didn't put it in there. Uh, indicators, excuse me, and it's called Copilot Bing. It's there. So it is there. So where is it? Did it put it somewhere else? So it starts with a C, so it's not there. So it's not there, it's not there. It should have put it in the main one. I'm not seeing it. Uh, no, custom moving average, no, it's not that, uh, examples, and there it is, sorry, it was right there, if you're watching this and you're like, I can see it, oh, okay, fine, smarty pants, okay, so here we go, let's put it on, let's see what happens, so colors, red and green, and I can make them nice and thick, obviously thicker than a certain thing, I'm just going to try that, because I'm thick, so we'll put it on there, boom, there we go, so red marker, red bearish and golfing candle, I'm going to pause for one second. I can just see that I'm about to be interrupted. So I'm just going to pause and I'll be right back. Okay. So let's keep going. Let's go back. Let's go back. Oh, there we go. So, all right. That's not an engulfing candle. So that is, that's a nice bullish engulfing candle. So how would you, I'm going to take a sidebar and how would you trade this for real? Well, you've got an uptrend. You can see your moving averages are reordering. So I'm doing a very quick mini, 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 mini masterclass here in, in price action. You've got a nice uptrend here. Forget about what's happening before. You're trading in real time. What's happening in real time. And the, they have shifted from bearish formation into bullish. So you've got the 50, the 20, and the 10. Prices pulled back to the moving averages and produced a bullish engulfing candle. That is a setup. That's a setup. So you would trade above the high, stop loss below the low. And you would target three to one on the next major level. And that would have been a that would have been a clean setup. Okay. Now, when you're in your new in your first hundred trades, you're not always gonna spot the stuff you're not. But over time you start to see all the things that are in your favor. Cool. So let's keep going because I want to wrap this up. So I'm not going back that hard. That's a bearish engulfing candle. That is not a bullish engulfing candle. It does not engulf the previous one, but that does. So that's great. So it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but I think and there's a bearish engulfing candle. And that's a bearish engulfing candle. That's not a bearish engulfing candle. That's is, that is, that is. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Still, I, I, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna wrap up the video here because I wanted you to get the gist of it. I hope you found this interesting and instructive. And I'm gonna do a separate video on MT4. So I wanna do the exact same thing I just did now on MT4 and see if it's MT5 is problematic or MT4 is problematic or whether Copilot is. But still, I'll tell you what I liked about this over ChatGPT. I, I like the way that it produced the code in a very pay, a copyable kind of little window. And also because I often found ChatGPT when it was writing code would just stop. It would just like, just trail and I'd be like, keep going. And then we'd have to carry on going. Um, but in every other respect, I found them largely the same. Um, still, very cool. I hope you enjoyed this and have a look at the MT4 one because if that one was a lot easier, that's also going to be interesting in its own way.